everyone. I trust you've all had an awesome week. Welcome to our service today. We pray that this service will be a blessing to you and to your family. Be blessed. Turn with me to Luke chapter 24. Um, as you saw from our e-posters, uh, our next about four weeks, be beginning today, next Sunday, the other Sunday up to the 6th of August, we want to mobilize we want to create a firm awareness about evangelism. I feel like we've waited for people so long to come to get saved in church. It doesn't work as it were. And so I begin today and then someone else will pick it up next Sunday. Like that as we raise uh, an awareness in the area of evangelism. And that's why we are saying making Christ known. Making Christ known. Oh, please, let me read from Luke 24, verse 44 to 49. Uh, NKJV. The Bible says, Then he said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you. That all things must be, must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the psalm, psalms concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. And he opened he, their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. May I decree to each one of us today and those that are watching us online that may the Lord cause you to understand the scriptures, comprehend it today. Let me say that again. May the Lord open your understanding that you may be able to comprehend the word today. Verse 46, he says, Then he said to them, Thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sin should be preached in his name. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name. To number one, say all nations. I didn't hear you say all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. Jesus addressing the disciples on the very last days of his life. Actually, this is really after resurrection. He's spending about 40 days with them, preparing them because he's about to go back to the Father. That we all know. And you are witnesses of this. And the Bible says, the last part of that scripture, verse 49, Behold, yeah, please give me that. Behold, I send the promise my Father Behold, I send the promise of my father upon you, but tarry in the city of Jerusalem until you're endued with power from on high. Somebody say amen. Today, I want to teach and I hope, allow me just to see if I can finish. I'll also try and skip a bit of things, but talk about the main things. I want to talk about evangelism, our mandate. Evangelism, our mandate. I am, I want to say that you're honored to be in this service today, to hear some of the things I'm going to share with you here that will move you to begin to urgently begin to evangelize. Four things we pick from this important scripture in Luke chapter 24. <clears throat> Jesus is spending time handing over 
to the disciples after spending about three years and some time. Number one, in a summary, these scriptures mean this, that evangelism is the catalyst for fulfilling God's commandment and prophecies. Is that a phone in the church? We don't do that, right? Evangelism is a catalyst for fulfillment of God's commandment, prophecies, both in the book of the law, the five uh, books of the Old Testament, and the book of Psalms. Number two, these scriptures Jesus is talking about, he's saying he's going to the Father. Number two, he's going to the Father, leaving behind people. Oh, this 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 to get into your spirit. To, he's leaving behind people who understand God's mandate here on earth. He tells them, "You are you are the you are witnesses of these things you've seen me speak and do." Now he leaves them with the mandate. Number three, people of all nations across the world should repent and their sins forgiven through the name of Jesus. People of all nations across the world should repent and their sins forgiven in the name of Jesus. That's the summary. If I was to stop there talking about evangelism. That is it. Number four. The last part. Behold I send the promise of my father. Because he said I will not leave you alone. I will send a helper. The paraclete. The helper. The counselor. On our own. Number four. We can't. On our own, we can't. The Holy Spirit must empower us. That's a summary. That's how Jesus is preparing the church to begin to evangelize nations. Now, today, you'll hear me talk about nations, talk about this country, talk about you as a Christian, talk about the church. These are all nations. They comprise us into one word, nations. Evangelism, our mandate. Now this word, mandate, simply means authority given to perform a task. Authority given to perform a task. An official command or instruction from an authority mandate is an official task, responsibility, or command from an authority. So, mandate flows down, I mean, up, down. Mandate does not go down, up. Mandate. God is our mandator. The one who gives us the mandate is God. Listen to me church this morning. God did not suggest that oh when you find time, when you are able, when your program allows fulfill this mandate. No. He never suggested. He never gave us an advice that it is a good thing for the church to evangelize. It's not a good idea. Hey, this is a command from God. Can I hear an amen? Yeah. A mandate from the mandator is a command that every believer must be able to fulfill. Now, what to evangelize simply means 
Good news. Tell your neighbor good news. It's a human psychology. It's a human uh, desire to always hear a good news about anything and everything. That's, let me try and retain myself here if I will. Good news. We all love good news. No wonder people, by the way, let me ask you, why do you watch news? Think about it just for a second. Why must you be glued on the TV even if your wife wants to release a concern that she has for that day? You say, wait until I finish the word, the news. We love good news, but I wonder what you love because most of our news on our boxes is always bad news. Am I right? Hey, am I right? Ah. You know, um, on, was it on Thursday when there was fracas? I didn't want to watch the news. I didn't want. It was heartbreaking. That's for another day, but we, let's decree that tomorrow there are no demonstrations in Jesus' name. Yeah. It's very painful when you see some things. Good news. Another word is good tidings. Good tidings or glad tidings. Let me tell the church. In fact, by the way, the word glad tidings in the Greek language, it is evangelism. It is evangelism. So, anywhere you encounter good news, it is an, an aspect of evangelism. Let me say this to the church today, that the gospel of Jesus is good news. Ah, you didn't hear what I said this morning. The gospel of Jesus Christ is good news. Oh, let me try again. You guys, Changamuka. The gospel of Jesus, Jesus Christ himself, he is good news. The world loves good news. The question is, do I, do you proclaim the good news? Evangelism is our mandate. When is the last time you shared good news about the kingdom of God, Jesus? Acts chapter 13, verse 32, you can read. It says, at home, it says, we declare to you glad tidings. In other words, we evangelize. We bring Jesus, the gospel of good news to you. That promise which was made to the fathers. Good news. Oh, may the church of Jesus Christ, especially in Kenya today, stop spreading bad news. May we begin to spread good news of Jesus Christ. By the way, you just need to go and tell someone, I have good news. They will say, oh, share with me the good news. Jesus Christ is a good news. Because Jesus Christ, the good news of Jesus Christ is a powerful force in the world. Amen. Amen. The gospel of Jesus Christ is the most powerful force on the face of the earth today. Pastor Joshua. Amen. The gospel of good news is a gift to all humanity. You're trying. Hey, let me take it again. That this good news is significant, my friends. It is the gift to mankind. Thank you. Try. Don't be too careful. Oh yeah, so Jesus Christ, he is the good news. Jesus Christ is the good news. I feel to say this, that 
if God allows us to get resources one of these fine days, we will do t-shirts and just write here, Jesus Christ, the good news. Eh? No, we don't have a green pastor to go church worship with us. No. That's not, that's good news, yes, but the good news is Jesus Christ. Hmm. The Bible says, John 3, 16. Let me, let me read verse 17. Munajua 16. 17 says, for God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world. He didn't. Uh, but the world through him might be what? Saved. The gospel of Jesus Christ is a gift to humanity. Evangelism is our mandate. So, evangelism is not just putting together an event quickly, urgently because the pastor has declared that in the next two, three months, we must evangelize. That is wrong. That is a wrong pattern of declaring the good news of Jesus Christ to the world. Oh. There's a package of the good news. Listen, friends. The good news is complete when people can hear the gospel of the good news about Jesus. That's not enough. They must, their sins must be forgiven. Do to say may he good news imefika. There must be forgiveness of sin, reconciliation of man back to God, seeing the people who have come to Jesus becoming disciples of Jesus Christ and operating in the power of the Holy Spirit. We will say the good news has functioned. Bible says, please read this at your time. Romans chapter 5 verse 12 to 21 is a long one. I want you to read but I can be given uh, verse 12. Give me Romans 5 12, just that alone. Give you an intro. Today, I must start up something about evangelism in your spirit. For God did not send his son into... No, that's, that's John. Where are you? Oh. Do we have it? Yeah, good. Therefore, just as through one man, sin entered the world. Death through sin, and thus death spread to all men, became one. The Bible continues to say, in the same way, salvation has come through one man. And his name is who? Oh, I didn't hear you. His name is who? Jesus Christ. Now, evangelism, which is a mandate, can only have impact through one man, Jesus Christ. Uh, I feel to say we have hidden Jesus Christ for a long time. He's not known. We have safeguarded him within the walls of our own mind and hearts and within the four walls of the church. It is time for the world to hear about Jesus Christ. Luke chapter 12 verse 47 48 the Bible says and the servant who knew his master and did not prepare to do according to the will shall be beaten many stripes. But he who did not know yet committed things deserving of stripes shall be beaten a few. Kama hu kujua tunafaa kwa evangelize viboko vyako ni vichachi. For everyone whom much is what? Oh, talk to me. For everyone much is? Uh -huh. Much is required. And to whom much has been? 
Simuseme, hii neno ni yetu wote. Bwana asifiwe. To whom much has been and him we shall ask more. Church and even those that are watching especially those in green pastures which other someone shall inspire you to evangelize over all these messages that have been preached please reduce your stripes by evangelizing <laughs> that's what the bible says romans 5:17 to 19 please read at your own time i wish i had time to look at that Why should we evangelize? Why should we evangelize? All of us have many reasons. If I was to pass the microphone, you'd be amazed. You'd be amazed by how you we know, including myself, why we should evangelize. Number 1. Not to lose the eternal investment we evangelize not to lose the eternal investment church bonus fewe bonus fewe when we don't evangelize this divine investment of salvation in Christ Jesus is threatened to fail and god in his own supreme power will never allow his eternal investment to fail we are the ones who are delaying the fulfillment of what jesus was talking about in luke chapter 24 because we are not doing what we need to do jesus christ has already done his part He has become the investment himself. Philippians 2:8 The Bible says and he gave himself to the point of death. He became human and to the point of death he died just because of you and me. What a level of investment. Who are we to threaten the investment of divine plan of God by not evangelizing? by not sharing the good news he shed his blood lost his life if we are together say amen number 1 not to lose this eternal investment two not to lose prophets prophets <laughs> you're wondering hey pastor prophets tell us pay attention to this calvary the cross is god's greatest seed seed invested for humanity let me take it again and please kama unasikia inaenda na wewe sema kitu amen Ah Calvary the cross the grave the power that raised Jesus from the dead oh yeah is God's greatest of all seed investment for all humanity that live on earth regardless of their race and tribe If we don't evangelize if we don't share the good news heaven is recording zero prophets every day let me come close the bible says if one soul enters heaven what is what happens there jubilation am i right one that's how serious heaven is concerned over the investment that God has given through Jesus Christ one soul uh, please pastor Paul come and sit next to pastor Anne. get a neighbor ask them how many 
How much investment have you put in heaven? Of souls. Na mtu aseme ukweli. Na kama hujawahi kutumia mtu sema mimi hata mimi ndio ninachangia hasara mbinguni. Kana jirani. Hapa hapa. Daktari, uliza huyu hapo nyuma yako. Wewe umeongoza wangapi kuingia? Hey, I'm talking please in this church we talk when I say you talk to a neighbor talk to your neighbor. Eh, uh, you know, Vera. Aha, uh-huh, Lina, thank you. Yeah. Hey. Is it charity? Muliza huyu. Na ukae hapo hapo usitoke hapo. Maana tutaongea. Tukae hapo. Thank you. I know they are giving excuses. Am I right? Oh, mimi sijawahi jua, sijawahi pata nafasi. You live with people around your life. You know well they don't have Jesus Christ. Si ni kweli? Yeah. Hata maybe kuna mtu hapa leo saa hii hapa ambaye hamjui Kristo. What have they told you? We are not supposed to bring loss to God's investment. Just stay there. Don't move. If we don't evangelize, heaven records zero investment every day. It means there is another king that is profiting. Si tunajua hivyo? Yeah, that's how serious it is. If people are not joining the kingdom of God through salvation by the good news, it means that kingdom of the devil is profiting. Oh, we decree that when we begin to evangelize, the kingdom of God will profit more and more every day through God using you in Jesus name. Mungu akutumie. Genesis 8:22 This aspect of seed time and harvest time is a lifetime it's not a program it's not an event it's a daily thing it is what gives us life this must be an ongoing thing the mandate of evangelism tusingoje program tusingoje mipangilio na tusichague wachache because they are evangelistic there is nothing like that While earth remains sea time harvest cold and heat winter summer day and night shall not cease in the same way when it comes to evangelism and the bible says in galatians 6 chapter 7 and 8 mnaijua whatsoever you sow you do what you reap if you sow in the flesh you reap in the in the flesh if you sow in the spirit what do you reap in the spirit so one of the most powerful ways of sowing in the spirit is sharing the good news of Jesus Christ somebody say amen when we don't evangelize we deny him of his harvest which is sowed through Jesus Christ number 3 why must we evangelize because of lost humanity because of lost humanity i can't i don't want to explain to you how humanity are lost because you know okay if you didn't know you need to know today multitudes of people will benefit from our fulfillment of our mandate people's lives will be changed Uliza hata jirani tu kama ungeokoka tungekuwa na wewe hapa Kuna watu ungekuwa kamiti wamepigwa 50 50 Am I still on kama ungeokoka if someone didn't share Jesus invested Jesus in you ungekuwa wapi leo lost humanity now 
there are two levels of human losing their life. One is while here on earth, you live without Jesus. That's a lost life. Just know, you need Jesus like 10 years ago. <laughs> Second level is after you, we put you down, cover you up, your soul is lost forever. And the Bible says in Revelation 20, allow me to read this one, it's a bit long, but I can read. Revelation 20, 11 to 15, quickly, the Bible says, then I saw a great white throne and him who sat on it, from whose the face of the earth and the heavens fled away. And there was found no place for them. And I saw the dead, small and great, standing before God. And books were opened. And another book was opened, which is a book of life. And the dead were judged according to their works by the things which were written in the books. The sea gave up the dead who were in it. Death and heads delivered up the dead who were in them and they were judged each according to his works. Most painful part. Then death and heads were cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. I told you. Second, there's a first one. Ukiwa hapa area. Na huko kwingine. And anyone not found written in the book of life was done what? Cast into the lake of fire. That lake of fire is an everlasting fire. Huwa haipunguki. Wala hayongezeki is constant for the rest of your life. I can bet some of us got saved because of that scripture. It's good. But now that you're still alive, bring others into the kingdom of God by sharing the goodness of Jesus. Read at your time, Revelation 28 verse, sorry, Revelation 21 verse 8. Without evangelism, people die in their sins and they are lost forever. Think about John 8, 24. See this condemnation of sin hangs always on the head of a sinner. Tazama jinsi hukumu ama shauku in her car, kwa kichwa cha mnyadhambi. If he is reached and receives Jesus Christ, he is rescued. If not, judgment awaits and torments forever. Kuna luga ambao sisi wa Kristo tunapenda ya kwamba huyo alitengewa shetani hawezi okoka. Na ni ndugu yako cousin yako, your uncle, your friend. That is not applicable here. The Bible says, if he is reached and with the good news and he receives Jesus, he will be rescued. May we rise up urgently to rescue the world by the good news of Jesus Christ. Your colleague, you've been working together for 19 years. In the same company. Na unajua ni mutenda thambi. Five years. Your neighbor. Your family. Hey. Number four. Why evangelize? To avoid wasted harvest. To avoid wasted harvest. Our disobedience or our obedience determines the harvest coming in. Yani, what you tell me, If you only obey and evangelize, 
and reach out, we will have harvest of souls of men. There's a common scripture, Matthew chapter 9. Jesus is walking around. He sees the crowd. Listen, he saw what others did not see. Listen to me. That's why when you begin to think about nations and people, you need the spirit of God to show you what is happening in people's lives. Others don't see the same. Don't see the same. Do you know Cooper Agency? Matthew 9, 35. The Bible says, then Jesus went all about the cities. The first word is cities. Everybody says cities. The second is what? Oh, listen to me. Say it. The second is what? Villages. Teaching in their synagogues. Preaching the, good, the gospel of the kingdom. And healing every what? Sickness. Let's go together. Every disease. Let me tell you, the Bible doesn't just put a word in the scripture. If it speaks about a sickness and a disease is different levels of infirmity. Infirmity. Among the people. Miongoni mwawatu. You live among people. You have neighbors. You have colleagues, friends. But when he saw, I like that scripture. I like that phrase. But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary, scattered like sheep having no what? Having no shepherd. At your time, read John 4, 35 to 38. Let me just bring out something here. When we talk about the good news, please, this is very important for you to distinguish. Believers don't struggle becoming workers for God. Workers. But we need to move to another level where we have laborers. People who are willing to sacrifice. Jesus says in John chapter 4 verse 35 verse 38 I will send a rip to you. I send you to reap for that which you have not labored. Others have labored and have entered into their labor, not into their works. May God raise laborers in this house who are passionate for evangelism. If you believe, let me say that again. Don't just say amen because you are committing yourself to a serious mandate before God. May God raise laborers here who have an agency to share the good news. All right, number five. Why evangelize? Lost rewards. To be able to withhold, not to lose rewards. Who will the master reward at the end of time? Now, if you go to the book of, is it First or Second Thessalonians chapter 5? Let me confirm. I put the scripture and I didn't put the book. Uh, verse 18. No, actually, second, just a minute, let me find it. Um, therefore, we wanted you, we wanted to come to you. Give me that scripture, someone. Is it chapter 4? Chapter 2? 
Ah, yeah, chapter 2. First Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 18. Listen, listen to this scripture. Kindly, kindly. The Bible says, therefore, we wanted to come to you, even I, Paul, time and again. But Satan hindered us. For what is our hope or joy or crown of rejoicing? J, our reward is what? The joy. What is our hope, joy, and crown of our rejoicing? Is it not even you in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ at his coming? In other words, Paul and Asema, we want to come to you, Thessalonians. He is in Athens and he wants to go, but the devil has hindered them. He says, we want to come so that we preach the good news. You join us so that at the end of time, we shall together rejoice over the crown of rejoicing. It must move you to that level that you are not settled until the people around you receive Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of their life. Say amen. Proverbs 11.30, the Bible says, a fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. Tuhunda ya haki ni muti wa uzima. He who wins souls, he is what? He is wise. Okay. Number six, wow. Wasted potential. Wasted potential. We are talking about anointed to serve effectively. The baseline, the baseline to training and discovering the passion, the gifting, the anointing, the, the calling is when you step out to preach the good news. Uh, those who agree with me say amen. Uh -huh. Oh, listen. There is something you'll experience different when you step out. You will not experience it in the church. So, how would I put up? The greatest fear of serving God is bringing non-believers to Christ. Exercise your potential. You will be amazed. Look at the story of Jonah. We all know. He is sent to go to Nineveh, right? Yeah. He quickly shifts and goes to Tashis. He had to just end up in Nineveh, whether he liked it or not. Quickly and passionately. Because he was wasting potential. My first experience of anything to do with God's business was out there. In Form 2, I'd gotten saved. We went to Luanda, Kima Market. How many are familiar with that place? Somewhere in Kenya. I don't know anything. I'm barely 16 years old. We did do to do evangelism. From that day, it has produced someone like me. I'm not saying that you begin to evangelize. You will become an apostle or a pastor. But something about God will begin to be born inside of you. Acts 26.19 Acts 26, 19, Paul standing before Agrippa, he says, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. He didn't want to disobey. Now, let me close with the last part of my sermon today. Why? Oh, who should evangelize? Who should evangelize? Why and who? That's my agenda for today. Romans chapter 10, verse 14 to 17. Let's all stand up and read together. And please, what online? Uh, thank you. Good. Let's all stand up and read together. To small message, what? Okay, Romans 10. One, two, three, go.
Uh-huh. How shall they believe in him whom uh-huh. shall they hear without a preacher? Uh-huh. Move on. Yes. of good things. That scripture is not for preachers. It is for all of us. That's a powerful portion of a scripture. Go back to verse 14. How shall they call on him they don't know? We are so fast to blame non-believers for their sins. Sema walevi wa mezidi. Wakora wa mezidi rongai. They have not heard the good news. Take your seat. I like verse 17 of that portion. It says, so then faith comes from hearing. That is hearing the good news. About Christ. Ata wasipo okoka. Umeenda door to door. Crusade. Whatever you're doing. As long as they have heard. Keep speaking it. Faith is building up inside of them. Who should evangelize? Number one. All believers. All believers. Just post for us Matthew 28. I will not read. Uh, you, we know the scripture. All believers. All believers would, if all believers should share about Christ, we would reach the world or the world's population within a few days. If the entire, (laughs) today in the world, we have 3.3 billion Christians. The world's population is 8 billion what percentage is that? Is that close to 45, 47? Why is the world not evangelized? This is what we call the Great Commission mandate. It is a command. Whether you're a child, young or old, we must fulfill the mandate of the good news. Number two, so all believers must. Let me see by show of hand. You are a believer. Lift up your hand. Yeah. Okay. We are talking. Number two, global church. The global church. Now I bring in the aspect of nations. The global church. Evangelical church. Jesus Christ has sent us to all nations and all the peoples of the earth. When, we hear, when you hear the word nations, mataifa, it's not Egypt. It could be one. It is the people of the earth, regardless of their geographical boundaries, as long as they are people of the earth, they are nations. It means then. In your community, you need to start reading nations from your community. Right there. Because there's a notion, and I need to correct this, when we hear nations, ah, India. No. Nations, the people who are just around you, who are different than you, are nations. Let me give you an interesting statistic. Now, this is in, across the world. This should give you urgency into global evangelization. There's something called the 1040 window. This is Middle East cutting across Asia to the other side of Korea. We have a total of 67 countries on that 1040 window. 67 countries. 
Unfortunately, all these nations are suffering religious depression. Highest level of religious depression. Poverty, terrorism, discrimination of women and even children and corruption. Who is going to them? That's global. I'll come back to our country. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. It's a powerful scripture about evangelism. He says, but you shall receive what? Let me hear from you. You shall receive what? The promise of the Holy of, G, of God to Jesus to the disciples. The Holy Spirit has come upon you. You shall be witnesses to me in uh -huh, Jerusalem and in all Oh yeah, and Samaria and the ends of the earth. I've had time to break this down, but let me just qualify this. Acts chapter 1 verse 8 is not a sequential scripture. Unasema sasa sisi, nataka tujaze kwanza Jerusalem na injili ndio tuende Samaria. No, that's misinterpretation of the scripture. I try to look for the version that says both in Samaria, Judea, and other parts of the world. I didn't know what version is that. Both. As we are becoming witnesses in Jerusalem, so we are becoming witnesses in Samaria. It is a simultaneous scripture. I love Nigerian brothers. I met another one last week here. I asked him, How, have you ever seen a Kenyan come in to do missions in Nigeria? He said, no. Oh yeah, he said, oh, but then they come for another business. Not, meet, not outreach. I asked them, how come in my lifetime of ministry, since I was in high school, I have encountered genuine Nigerian preachers. Hardly South Africa, hardly Ghana, hardly Uganda few. He told me in their culture, when they received the word of God, as it says, they do it as it says. If it says go to the nations, they go to the nations literally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's a man called Gerald Goldbeck. He says, Jesus Christ will not tell us to do more than he would be willing to do. If he says go to nations, it's the same ability he will do. Go to the nations. I like this statement here. We are global believers in a local assembly. Please, if you have a burden for a nation, go there. If you have a burden for a count in this nation, go there. While still you're sharing in Jerusalem. Number three, who should evangelize? It's all who see the urgency. Wale ambawa naona udharura. We don't have all the time to wait until when you're ready to preach to share the goodness. The time is now. Please post John 9.4. But write, record this, 2 Corinthians 6.2. The Bible says, for he says, in an acceptable time, I have had you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the acceptable oh listen to let's say it together now is the acceptable what time behold now is the day of salvation 
Those who see the urgency. May you see that urgency from today. In Jesus' name. If you don't think it's serious, listen to this. Across the world, there are only six workers per a million Muslims across the world. Okay? Six workers among one million Muslims across the world. There are two workers for every one million Hindus in the earth. At least he or Majaribu, the third one. Buddhists are 520 million in the world. Buddhists. 520 million. Kwa hile nile onyesha hile 1040 window. They have 13 workers per 1 million. Agency. Over evangelism. If only 1% of evangelical Christians in Africa Africa were mobilized to go to the Muslims, Hindus and Buddhists. It would be the most largest conversion and a movement ever seen in the history of the world in a day. Oh, in a day. We can use internet and mobilize churches across Africa. And say, on this day, particular day, we'll reach out to the Muslims, Hindus, and Buddhists. In one day. Let me go quickly now I close. All believers, number four, who evangelizes? All believers who carry the message. is a fixed message. The message of the kingdom of God. The message of Jesus Christ. The methods may change, but the message remains. Matthew 24, 14 for your own record. Number five, those obedient to God's command. To Misha Semahio. The mandate. Number seven, number six, those who have understood that this is the only supreme agenda, the only supreme agenda of why Jesus came to the earth. Hakuna biashara ingine. Yesu alikuja kufanya hapo ulimwenguni. Every other agenda inclines to that of the gospel of good news. Everything, everything Jesus did pointed us to the humanity, to the saving of humanity at Calvary. Number seven, that's my last one. Then I give you statistics and then we pray. True disciples of this, okay, number seven. Who should evangelize? True disciples of Jesus Christ. If truly you're a disciple of Jesus, you never let anyone lose up your hand without preaching to them. Evangelism is the most effective way of raising disciples of Jesus Christ. Evangelism has not been effective because we have half-backed disciples. Disciples. We know this quote by Francis of Assis. He says, preach the gospel at all times. Use words if what? Necessary. Okay? Use words if necessary. Let me close by sharing with you some statistics that will blow your mind about the opportunities this nation has to preach the gospel of Jesus. The world has about 8 billion people. According to the Joshua Project 2022 research, if you didn't know, globally, we have 17,424 groups of tribes or groups in the world, people groups in the world. Here in Africa, we have 7,414 people groups. No, sorry. Out of the 17,000, 
7,414 people's groups have never been reached with the gospel of the good news. In other words, 42% of people in the world, they don't have a Bible, they don't know about Jesus, maybe a very small percentage, maybe 1%, know Christ. Among the unreached, only 5% profess Jesus Christ across the people's groups. Let me surprise you that one out of eight people in the world are saved. One out of eight people in the world are saved. Who is reaching the seven? Muslims, I would give statistics, but not today. If you're not careful, Muslims are surpassing the number of, not Christians, ever, <laughs> Christians, yes, Christians across the world. Muslims use family and one-on-one -on -one strategy to evangelize Muslims. If you didn't know, by 20, mm -hmm. okay, okay, all right, I left that one out. But by 2025, in China, there shall be over 300 million evangelical believers under the ground in the next two years. Right now, no, this is actually in 2010, there were 58 million born again Christians in China. In the next two years, there will be over 300 million. Let's close with Kenya. What about our nation? Please, Moringa, come and play this. Kenya, one time we had 22 people's groups who had never been reached. Today, they are 27. somewhere. These are ethnic groups with less than 2% indigenous followers of Christ. Kwa mfano kama ni wa Sakuye in Moyale, only 2% of that population, if there are 70,000 of them, even less, how do you want to Christ? That's an enriched group. Kenya has about 3.5 Muslims who are in nine counties of this country. It's amazing to understand that Kenya has an ardent percentage of, evangelic, uh, of, of Christians. They say Christians, 79.98. That's 80%. Christian John, Lakini Nimutu, Haindi Kanisa, but in Christo, Catholic, Presbyterian, whatever, Baptist, all that. Listen, listen to the privilege and the advantage that Kenya has to turn around this nation, and not only this country, Africa and across the world. Listen to me carefully. Those prophetic words you hear, oh, Kenya is a light of Africa, is true. This is why I know. Today, today, Evangelicals in Kenya, out of 79% or 80%, 49.73 are evangelicals in Kenya. No, Karibu Nusu. They were Kenyan. Evangelical. With an annual growth of 3.4% annually. It's been determined that this is the highest proportion of evangelical population in a nation in the world. Okay. So, why are we not evangelizing? I close. Christians in Kenya need to arise. Churches in Kenya 
need to evangelize. It needs to become a part and parcel of your life. Not a problem. Evangelism is good tidings. Is good news. You only share the good news of what you know. Let's stand up and make some commitment to God. Today, today, you don't have to complicate it with scriptures. Tell somebody Jesus Christ loves you. Whatever way you're going to do it. There is an urgency for evangelism across the world. I do want to share with you the statistics in the US. You'd be amazed. The biggest ever church to gather in one place in South Korea. We must evangelize. You carry the good news inside of you today. Jesus Christ is the good news. If truly he is inside of you, you have no excuse to tell someone about him. Become a witness of him from today in Jesus' name. Become a witness of Jesus Christ to others from today in Jesus' name. So Lord, I pray for each one of us today that Lord, you've reminded us about the mandate of evangelism, sharing the good news. So help us. Every opportunity that comes across us is an opportunity to share the good news to the glory of God. So for the church, we are going to put together an event on the 12th of August by God's grace. I will assemble here everyone and go and literally share the good news. But don't wait for 12. You can start right now. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe that you have been impacted with the word of God the same way that I have been impacted with the word of God today. If you want to give your life to Christ, if you want to receive salvation, please say the following prayers after me. Lord, I come before you today. I acknowledge that I am a sinner. I acknowledge that you died on the cross so that my sins could be forgiven. I accept you into my life and I surrender unto your Lordship. Amen. Amen. Heaven is celebrating today. If you have made that prayer, there is a number below your screen. Kindly get in touch with us for further assistance and guidance. Be blessed.